that declaration for the new year once more it's a call from the spirit we are answering the call uh, it's not a, a given it's not a given <laughs> we have to answer the call so we are answering the call once more thank you so much apostle Sandler for the wonderful song welcome says happy new year to everybody happy new year it's wonderful to have you back it's wonderful to see all of you that you are back into the new year trusting god for great things in this new year we trust him we trust him that he's gonna do great things uh, again this year he has done great things we are grateful that we are still here and still alive in the new year it's not a given again uh, it is by the grace of god that we have entered the year and we are still alive i see all of you are back all of you are back and i'm grateful to god for you let me acknowledge everybody that came in and uh, tried to capture the names apostle sima happy new year woman of god i see you came in uh, Tino, i acknowledge you my prophet god bless you thank you for coming in uh, pastor asake welcome woman of god thank you apostle unati we bless the lord for you and your husband for the wonderful song uh, elisa thank you woman of god bless you bless you thank you so much for coming in no school thank you woman of god i bless you happy new year to you good day thank you my baby welcome welcome thank you so much uh apostle Pangana, woman of god bless you thank you so much for coming in as well uh charity hey hi my baby welcome woman of god uh pastor novesu too welcome woman of god bless you tafaz i see you coming in welcome welcome as well god bless you nabisa welcome my baby god bless you it's it's a new year it's a new year and new things uh, are springing up great things the holiday was uh, was awesome it was quite the way I like it relax and uh, nothingness it was a world of nothingness that is my best holiday uh, no plans nothing just you do nothing what are you doing nothing I'm happy <laughs> then I am happy that was my holiday. Uh, Tandekile, I see you. <coughs> I'm sorry. Let me drink some water. Lily, hey, my baby, see you as well. Who else? I see. I'm trying to see without the glasses. Oh, Pastor No, no, welcome, woman of God. Thank you so much for coming in as well. So basically, I had a good holiday because I was doing nothing which is good nothing with the challenges though <coughs> the challenges were there lots of challenges but it was a world of nothingness uh, so i bless the lord i'm grateful to be back again in the new year um god is good we trust the lord to speak once more to us as we step into this new season we expect to hear god speaking i expect to hear a, a lot of god speaking this year this year I'm expecting revelation after revelation, like I'm not looking for anything that I've had before. I'm looking for new things, a God speaking new things to me. So my spirit is so open. I'm hoping your spirit, I'm trying to challenge your spirit as well to be open uh, to what God is going to say that you, you read the word with new glasses. You take off the old glasses and you put on new glasses as you read the word. You expect to see something new. Uh, forget that the prior knowledge that you have, uh, you come in as... <clears throat> 
as a tabula rasa. A tabula rasa is a clean slate. You come in as a clean slate and say, God, just write on me whatever you want to write. So I want that. I'm having that attitude as I read the word in this new year that God may speak new things. I'm a person of revelation. I'm a person that loves to, to hear things that other people don't hear. I'm that kind of person. And I am challenging you to do the same when you read the word and, and trust God. The things that I've had already during this holy day as I was reading the word, they, they quite exciting. I've seen things that I never saw before. So uh, that is the what I want for me throughout uh, this, this season. And I was going to share one of them to, <laughs> with you today i went to bed with an idea of what i was gonna speak about but as i woke up this morning the lord started ministering because i went to bed saying lord speak what you want to speak to your people and i woke up with something totally new and fresh and and it's not as exciting but it's what god wants for you today it's not a revelation but it's not it's what god wants for you today and i'm also as i'm i'm giving it to you i want to hear it for myself what is is it exactly that one god wanted to say about this message because to me it's really not exciting but it's a word from God for, for everybody. And I want you to listen well as I share it and take what is yours in this word. I'm, I'm going to try and take what is mine as I continue to read it and, and, and give it to you. So God wants to speak about God of a detail, God of a detail. God is very detail, uh, detailed. You know, I woke up and the Lord started reminding me of, of two things that I feel that were very detailed that he wanted to to show me that he's a god of detail things that really shocked me uh one year i think three four years ago i was ministering i was going to minister Engobo. i was going to go and minister Engobo. so i was supposed to minister on a friday the saturday and a sunday but we uh, were delayed on the way on a Friday because of transport problems. We had serious transport problems. And so when we got there, the, the, the service was already out. It was very late and the people had left. So we got there and the pastor was waiting for us. And he, the pastor and his wife, and they're waiting for us. They welcomed us and then uh, we were fed and we went to bed. That, that was the Friday night. No, nothing happened. We literally greeted them. They fed us and we went to bed. But that night I had a dream. I had a dream and in this dream I was given... A, a, a photo album the lord was giving me a photo album and this photo album he said to me this is the photo album of this church this is the is the is the foundation of this church this is a foundation of this church so i took the photo album and i looked at I, as i woke up i remember two pictures there excuse me the water is making me two pictures there was this one old man uh, he was not that very old, late 50s, early 60s, there were one of them. And then there was a young man, maybe early 30s, up to 40. He was a colored guy. And the Lord said to me, this colored guy, he was here in the foundation of this church. And he was a prophet. That's what he said. He was a prophet. And God said to me, you are coming here to restore the prophetic. What he started here, you are coming here to restore the prophetic because it was lost after he had left. This is what's happening in a dream. So I wake up in the morning and life continues and the service starts. We go, I think we had two services that, that day. We go to the first service, forgot the dream and it had nothing to do with, with that day, with that morning service. Uh, so we continued and then we went out for lunch and we came back for the next service. So this is what happens in the next service. Now that reminds me of the dream that I've forgotten. As we come into the next service, this man, and the older man that I saw in the dream comes into the church. I nearly fell off saints. It was, it was such a shocker. There is this guy before me that I saw. I don't even know. I saw in a dream. He comes into the church. What? <laughs> Literally, I nearly fell off the chair. That was a shock. And then the dream came back to me now. Wow, this is what God showed me. This is the guy. So I went up. 
to the stage, took the mic and shared this thing now and shared the dream and shared what the Lord showed me. And the pastor stood up after me. He was like shocked. He was shocked at what I'm seeing. He named the colored guy. He gave him a name. Uh, the, this church is AFM. So what happened is that that church was starting at the time when God said it was in the foundation. He was meaning the foundation literally. Uh, the guy was... As the church was starting, so AFM sent this particular prophet to this church to go help them and establish the foundation. So he stayed with them for a longer time, maybe a period of close to a year. Uh, he stayed with them. And then what happened? After he left there, after he left the church, uh, a month, a few months later, he died. The guy dies. And so the prophetic basically died with him. They never picked that up. The, the prophetic never moved in the church. It died with the guy. So when God was saying to me, you are coming here to restore the prophetic, the work that this guy started, it was like a shock. It's something that even today, and uh, it still shocks me. So that is the kind of God that we serve, the God of the detail. He is a very, very detailed God. He cares about little things that we know. That The other thing that the Lord reminds me, the Again this morning to show me how detailed he is was ministering in East London. Uh, the in three years back, I think it was three years back. Uh, so uh, I'm ministering in this church in East London, and then it was on a Sunday. I was ministering the whole weekend there, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the Sunday I started prophesying. I didn't preach that day. It was all about prophecy. So I started prophesying. And then there's this one lady as she comes uh, to, 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 to the line. Uh, I think I was calling people one by one. They were not standing there. I was calling them from the floor. So as she comes and the Lord just says to me, like something in me says, I need to bow to her like she, she's royalty. And I say to her, you, you have royal blood. I, something to, says to me, I must bow to, actually need to bow before you and, and acknowledge you. And she starts like tears start flowing over oh, her eyes. And, and, uh, and I start prophesying to her about other things, lot of detail. But I'm shocked about this thing that I want to bow to her. You know what happened? So the service continues. So, so the host, the lady who's, who's hosting with the pastor of the house, she starts crying. She starts screaming and still as, I, as soon as I say that. She was screaming anyway from one person to the other as, as I prophesied because the prophecies were too detailed. Like they were detailed to the T. So she, she, she cried like she screamed when I say this to this lady. So after the service, we go to the hostess house to, to have lunch and I I am told, like, they're shocked. They, they are shocked about what I said. This lady comes from the royal family, the Kosa royal family uh, in the trans sky. What, what is it now? I forgot now Now that I'm speaking. It, it, it escaped my mind. Um, what is it? Uh, I don't know. if I think Nolita is here. I, if she can remember it, she must write it here. Uh, she comes from that royal, the well-known Kosa royal families. And I was like, What? God knows that these details that we take for granted, royalty here on earth is recognized by God in the heavens as royalty. He takes it that seriously. So when these people have royal blood in the eyes of God, they have royal blood as well. It's not something of the earth. It's not that they pick themselves because I don't even know how people pick themselves and become royalty amongst other people. But it's strange that God in the heavens, now that they are recognized as that, he recognizes them as that. So God is that detail. He is a God of detail. So as I woke up this morning, God reminds me, he speaks to me about that, that I am the God of detail. I care about the little things that you take for granted that you think they are just by the way are things that are coincidences and, and incidences. They are the details that I actually care about. So God, as we start this new year, he wants to remind us of that, that we must look with our eyes open at 
everything that happens for us, nothing happens for no reason. No, nothing is an accident to God. The coincidences that we think are coincidences, they are not coincidences. They are real in the eyes of God. They carry meaning. Even the rebellion that is happening in your house, even the marriage that is, is breaking in your, in your family, every little detail, your pennilessness, the fact that you don't have money, you're poor, that detail God cares exactly about those details. He is a detailed God. So at the beginning of this year, the Lord wants to remind us that we must take care of everything. Check everything. Check the things that are happening around you. Check the incidences. Check the people around you. Everyone that I, I send your way. People don't just cross your way. You know, I, I, I look at marriage. I look at marriage, for instance, and look at these two people that, that, that come from for the different ends of the earth and they somehow meet. Do you think that's a coincidence? There can't be a coincidence. The world is too big that in a, in a billion, billions of people that you will meet that one particular person and marry that particular person. For instance, I'm born at humans of my husband comes from the trans sky. What are the chances? Like I'm, I'm a, a girl that grows up in humans. But that's no coincidence. That, that is God. God who knew us before the foundations of the earth. He had planned these things. So there is no, nothing, nothing that happens for no reason in the eyes of God. Everything has a reason. Everything happens for a reason. God has planned and purposed our lives. And every detail has been planned by God. Even if you marry the wrong person, I always tell the people that you can anybody can marry anybody but it will take a process of chiseling that person to fit into you they are gonna fit at the end but it's gonna be a long process of trying to make that square peg fit into that round hole but it's gonna fit at the end because nothing happens for no reason there are no coincidences in the eyes of God he is a God of purpose he is a God of detail and he cares about the little details in our life Lives. Therefore, that is what God wants to speak about today. Let's go to the word. I want to start with the shorter verses before I go to the long one. That shows how much God is detailed about our lives. There's a scripture that is in the book of, of Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10 from verse 29 to verse 31. This is what God says. And not two sparrows sold for a penny. And not two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And then he goes on to say, and even the very hairs of your hair are all numbered. Even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Even the hair of your head are numbered. You are worth more than little than many sparrows. God is saying two sparrows, two sparrows, two sparrows sell for a penny. They sell for nothing. Yet they are two. He's trying to show us that how unimportant sparrows are, how much of, of no value they are. They carry no value. Two of them are selling of one penny. They carry no value. But God is saying, though in the eyes of man, sparrows carry no value, but I still care about them. None of them will fall to the ground because they are valueless in your sight. I care about them when they fly. They don't fly and just drop to the ground. I care about little sparrows. I carry them. Therefore God says, you are worth more than many sparrows. If I care about a sparrow that is valueless, your worth is more than many sparrows. I care about you more than many sparrows. So when the enemy tells you that you have no value, remember that word because sometimes the enemy can tell us that we have no value. I remember at the time 
time when I was losing everything. This one particular day, I was sitting at the, at the shop crying. I went to the bathroom and I sat on the floor next to the toilet and I was crying. And the enemy said to me, this is exactly where you belong. K-A-K-A, actually, you belong in the toilet. So sometimes the, the, the enemy can devalue us like this and tell us that you are actually poop. You belong in the toilet. God wants you to remember that to him, you are worth more than many sparrows that he cares so much about. But your value is worth. So your care is double and triple that of a sparrow. God will not let you fall on the ground. He will carry you. Sometimes we hit the ground, but we rise up again. He lets us hit the ground for a reason, but he does not leave us on the ground. He says a righteous man falls seven times, but he rises up again. So even in your falling, when people try to write you off, when people devalue you, sometimes people can devalue you. They, they ignore you. They act like you don't exist in order to devalue you. But God is saying, you will not lose your value because I have not placed your value upon your people. I, the Father, care. I, the Father, care for you, not people. Your value is in me. I have the scale. I weigh you. You are in the palm of my hand. Therefore, I weigh the value of your worth, not many people. So I care about your life sometimes more than you care about it but I care about your life. So God is saying, I care. I care your value is more than many sparrows. And I want us to look at another scripture again. In John chapter 1 verse 48, God says, because Jesus is speaking to Nathaniel from verse 47, he says, when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, he is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know? Nathaniel has asked Jesus, replied, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. God saw Nathaniel way before Nathaniel called. This is the kind of God. Mm, she, well, this is the kind of God that will serve. He sees you in your desperate place, in your shelter, in whatever Nathaniel was taking, probably shade under the tree. He must be, maybe he was in despair. But God saw him under that tree. So God sees you in whatever place that you are. There is no place where you are hidden from God's sight, even in your pain, even in your sickness, you are not hidden from God's sight. Sometimes pain can tell us that God has forgotten about me, but God, he says, you can never be forgotten. I can never forgotten, forget you. You are forever in my sight. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, let's not forget that as we navigate 2023 with everything that's going to be thrown our way. We, I cannot promise you that this is going to be a good year. It might be a good year for your neighbor. It might be a good year for your sister, but it may not be for you. But God is telling you at the beginning of this year, it's all right. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I care about that detail of yours. I care about those cells in your body. I care about the blood corpuscles in your blood. I care about the strand of of your hair. I have actually numbered the strands of your hair. So if you lose a strand, it's not because God didn't care. Because I have this hair that is gone. It's not because God doesn't care. He knows this strand. And before I was formed in my mother's womb, he knew that at this age, I would have lost strand number 50, strand number 75, strand number 980. God knew that. Therefore, that does not move God because he knew that this strands of my hair will be gone at this age. Therefore, God cares. He cares about the details in our life. Let's not allow ourselves to be deceived by pain, to be deceived by shame, to be deceived by the enemy and actually think God has forgotten us. He is a God of detail. If he tells me about a prophet that came to a church 10 years before and I came 10 years later and God speaks about that prophet that died 10 
10 years ago. Don't you see that God, nothing escapes him. Nothing is ever out of his sight. A man that died 10 years before that I have never met, but God showed me the man. I get the picture of the man and see the man. What kind of a God is this? What manner of man is the God that we serve? There is no God like our God. He is a good God. If he cares about the man that died 10 years ago, how much more does he care about you? How much more he cares about your situation? You are alive today. God cares more about your situation. He cares more about your status. Yes, he might look like yes have gone by. It's all right. He controls the time. He carries the time. He is time. Therefore, there's nothing that is outside of him. There's nothing that beats outside of him. Time is in his hands. Time is under his control. Therefore, the years that have passed in your sight looking like your life is not going to change. It takes like this. I always tell you that David went to bed a shepherd and the next morning he woke up a king. That is the God that we serve who can change your situation overnight, my God. He can change your situation overnight. How man had built the gallows to, to, to nail Mordecai, but overnight God brought Mordecai to the king's remembrance. The books were brought before the king and the, the, the status of Mordecai. My God, he did not only save his life, he did not only not die, but he lived a fulfilled life. Mordecai's life changed. His life was fuller than before. He inherited the kingdom. He was next in command in a foreign country from being uh, sentenced to death the previous day. My God, from being sentenced to death, the gallows have been built. They have his name on it. I don't know what the enemy has built for you. That he has set a date. He has built it. He has dug the grave and has finished about you. The meeting has been set and they discussed you and they decided what they decide about you. But the next day, my God, when they think that they are going to punish you, a letter comes that you've got the promotion, you've got the post that you applied for, that you have forgotten about. They have discussed here and decided they were going to do whatever. They're going to fire you. We are going to fire him. We are going to uh, suspend him. We are going to uh, demote him. They have said all those things. But you wake up the next day. You receive a call that says that post that you applied for, the one you went for an interview for in December, it is now yours. So you take away the joy of them giving that news, of that, that demotion or whatever they had planned upon you. So God is God who's capable. He cares about you in that way. Every detail to him matters. Every detail you're walking, you're waking up and you're going cares. God cares about those little things. Nothing escapes our God. Nothing is forgotten by God. He is a God of the little details of your life. Let's move to another scripture. In the book of Joshua, chapter number seven, God cares even about the bad details of your life. Actually, he doesn't care about the good things only. In the book of Joshua, chapter number seven, the Israelites, let me read it, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted thing. Achan, son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger bent against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Aven, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three hundred men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three hundred, three thousand went up, but they were rooted by the men of Ai, who killed 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Allah sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites? If only we have been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. The Canaanites, the Lord said to Joshua, sorry, 
Oh, phone, no. Stand up. Why are you doing your face down? Israel has sinned. That's what God says. So even your sin, uh -huh, even your sin does not escape God. Joshua has been given by God the city of Ai. So he goes there with confidence. I don't know what God has given you, what God has promised you. There's things that you have been promised by God. But with all that confidence that God had said this, what was your lifestyle before and after God has given you the promise, before you go into the thing that God has promised you? Joshua has been given the promise, but he doesn't know that the sin in the camp, Achan has taken and the things from Jericho that are defiled by God that they were told not to take so these things are in the camp I don't know what is in your camp that you think it's unimportant but it is the detail that is delaying your life God cares about the detail the little thing that you think does not matter to God maybe it's gossip maybe it's cheating maybe it's stealing some little things from work whatever that you are doing that you think it, it's harmless it, this is harmless like I'm doing this against myself I'm masturbating so it's not after affecting anybody I'm having this relationship it's I'm sinning against my own body it's the little details that we think we don't care they matter to God Israel goes to war against the people of I and they get there with this to this powerless people of I but 36 of them were killed because there was sin in the Camp. So sometimes the detail that you don't even know matters to God. That to you is a by the way. To you, it's normal living. You've been doing this for years. It has become a part of your life. You don't care about. Therefore, this detail is the little thing that God is holding you with. You are not progressing because of this little detail. God of the detail is looking at the sin in your camp. There is sin in your camp. Therefore, until you deal with the sin, until you deal with Achan in the camp, therefore the God of the detail won't move in your situation. He cannot come into that situation because the camp is defiled. Remember, God did not move in a camp that was defiled. He doesn't like big places that are defiled. He stays away from defiled people, places. Therefore, the camp is defiled. Check the camp before you blame God, check the camp, clean the camp before you say God has forgotten me. He is standing outside the camp. It looks like he has forgotten you, but he cannot enter. He's standing outside waiting for you to clean the camp so that he may come in and to zakah in your situation. But he cannot zakah now because his hands cannot touch what is defiled. Therefore, Joshua is defeated. He goes to God and God is saying no 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 don't do that to me don't come with that sad face to me I'm not looking for your sad face I'm looking at the sin so sometimes we cry before God and become sad like Joshua Joshua doesn't understand but you said you had given us I why are my people being killed so he is sad the elders put ashes on their head but God is saying no no go and clean yourself it's useless before me why are you acting like that why are you you said you should instead clean the camp. The problem is the camp. I'm looking at the detail. Remember Joshua didn't even know this detail. He didn't know that there was sin in the camp, but it affected him. It affected everybody in the camp. Therefore, the God of the detail, he wants you to clean yourself. At the beginning of this year, God is giving you an opportunity to clean the camp so that you move well with him. That you may move well with God. Maybe we need to forgive some people. Maybe we need to even go to them and say, I am sorry for what you don't know, but you need to go and say, I'm sorry because you know they have an issue with you. What is it you don't know? You need to go and say, I am sorry. Therefore, we need to try and clean our hearts and clean our minds and clean our bodies and clean our camp so that God of the detail may look at us and see 
purity and see holiness and see cleanliness and come and intervene in our situation. Sometimes you've offended your husband in that house. You've offended your wife. So God is looking at this house. There's so much prayer that is going on. But he's saying, oh my God, there's so much uh, defilement in that camp. If only you guys can only clean that camp, then I can come in. If you guys can only forgive each other and move forward, then I can come deal with that situation. But with all the bitterness that is going on, with all the pain and the shame that is going on, I cannot come in there. I am waiting for you to remove this detail, this little detail that matters so much for me. Therefore, God is a God of the detail, not only in good things, but in bad things as well. He wants us to be clean. He wants us not to defy the camp. The last scripture that I wanted to go through, but I wanted to go to these short ones first before I can go this one. Psalm 139. I'm going to quickly run through it word for word. Psalm 139. He says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <laughs> You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <laughs> uh, say, say it for yourself. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <laughs> I want you to say it so that you can hear it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So that when things happen, you don't think that God has not forgotten me has forgotten. You know that God knows me. You have said it yourself. You have confessed yourself that you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. <laughs> God knows me. God knows you. God knows me. God knows you. Can you say God knows you? God knows you. Bumelel, God knows you. He knows you. And he says, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You know when I sit and when I rise. You know that, 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 that seems so petty and unbelievable. I'm looking for words. It looks like unbelievable that God knows when you sit and when you rise. But when you look at you being saved from an accident just outside on the street, it, it now tells you that God knows when you rise. He saw you when you were leaving your house. So therefore your angels were dispatched to go and, and, and fetch you from there. He knows when you sit and he knows when you rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. <laughs> this one scares me. You perceive my thoughts from afar. God knows our thoughts. He perceives our thoughts. Oh, Lord. Uh, that this, this is the biggest sin area. <laughs> oh, Lord. Why are you looking at thoughts? No, not thoughts. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, not thoughts. <laughs> Do you know, you know how much we sin in our thoughts? We sin in church. In our, our thoughts, while the preacher is preaching, you you are sinning right in church. Oh, Lord, no, please, not thoughts. Go in every other area, but not thoughts. <laughs> thoughts should be a no-go area. But God sees our thoughts. He sees our thoughts. <clears throat> Therefore, we cannot pretend with God. You cannot pretend with God. And then he said, I pray, oh, for, sorry. Wait. You discern my going. And my lying down, you are familiar with all my ways. He descends your going and your lying down. God descends. So wherever you lie down, God is there descending that. Uh, where do you lie down? <laughs> Let, let's pass. I'll leave you with that question. Where do you lie down? God descends that. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word on, is on my tongue, you, you, Lord, know it completely. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. <laughs> so the fact that you don't release SS to God doesn't matter because God <laughs> already knows that to kill you. <laughs> Before that, that lays on your tongue, God knows it. Oh, if you took an apagati, like, like, I'm gonna, uh, if, if only she knew what, what I was saying inside, you might as well say it because God knows it. God knows it. And we don't fear men, we fear God. So God knows the stukos that you release upon people every day. And he says, uh, before 
You have me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. God protects us from behind and before. He protects us. He's a God that is that much detail. He protects us from behind and he protects us be from before. We are surrounded by God all the time. So we should, we should actually ask when, when things come to us, what have we done that may, that defiled the camp that made the enemy to be able to come to us. We, those are little things that show us that we are outside of God's purpose. We are in sin because he says he hems us. He protects us from behind. So when I've just said when the sin in the camp, God steps out of the camp. So when the enemy comes at you and he can get through to you, it means you, there was defilement in the camp. Therefore, there's no God that is hemming you from behind and before he has stepped out of the camp. So it should be a clue to you that, oh, Ooh, the enemy is coming in then there's something that I must fix in my life then you can check your life what what detail did I miss that God sees in my life he says such knowledge is too wonderful for me too lofty me too lofty for me to attain such knowledge is too wonderful it is too wonderful for me as well such knowledge is too wonderful for me david looks at all these things that god does and thinks wow this is too much why are you doing all these things this is too much for me to think that you care about me this much you care about the details in my life this much lord this is too much for me it's too lofty for me where can i go from your spirit my god where can i flee from your presence you cannot flee the presence of the lord you cannot go away from the god from the spirit of the lord he sees you wherever you are hidden he sees you you cannot flee from him therefore the fact that you are angry with god and you run away from god no you cannot flee from him he sees you in that place that you are in and is waiting for you to come back. He's waiting for your anger <laughs> to subside. <laughs> He's giving you a chance to get over. He's saying, He's saying please get over it. Get over that. Get over that. Get over it. I'm waiting for you to, to come back. Get over it. You cannot run away from God's presence. The spirit of God that is in you, it marks you. You are marked for God forever. Therefore, wherever you go, that follows you. That's why even you can fall deep and deep and deep into sin. But you will come back again because you have been marked for God. And that mark forever follows you. God says you cannot run away from the presence. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. <laughs> if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Sure, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark. Hey, Shia. Even the darkness will not be dark. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. There is no place you can hide from God. There is no place you can hide from God. You can go and tomorrow and become a Sangoma, but still there you have not hidden. You are a prophet of God and you are a prophet of God. Even there, the mark of God will follow you. That's why you will come back again and testify and burn everything here and tell us that you are coming back because that mark has followed you there. You cannot, if I go to the depth of the sea, the Lord is still there. He says, even darkness cannot be dark to you. Hey, Jesus, somebody catch that. I don't know what darkness you are in, but God is telling you right now, even darkness cannot be dark to you. Even darkness cannot be dark. You can never be so overwhelmed and so, so overcome by darkness that you fall into the darkness. Even darkness cannot be dark. You make darkness light. 
Have you ever struggled by people will see the glory of God of, over you in the midst of your struggle? It's because when darkness comes to you, it becomes the light. You make darkness light. Even darkness cannot be dark to you. So people will see the glory of God in your worst day, in your lowest of days. People will still see the glory of God because darkness just comes upon you and it becomes light upon your life. God of the detail. And then he says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You know, I, I was reading this and I'm thinking, oh my God. He knows my inmost being. He knitted me in my mother's womb. And I'm, I'm sitting and thinking, how great is our God. Even the imperfections, <laughs> even the imperfections in you, he made them imperfect because he doesn't want anything that is perfect. Only him can become perfect. So the imperfections, you know, when, when they speak about Absalom, they say he was so perfect, there was nobody like him. But we know that the insides of Absalom were imperfect. He killed and he wanted to oh, kill his father as well. He, he overthrew his father. Therefore, there's nothing that is too perfect for God. So he needed you. That thing that you feel that, I wish I could remove this. I wish if my ears were uh, not as big, if my lips, if my nose, that imperfection, he needed it in your mother's womb. He made you imperfect for a reason. There those imperfections were the doings of the Lord. The things you hate about yourself, they were the doings. They, they were not flaws of nature. In this scripture says, he knitted me in my mother's womb. Therefore, the stitches that he missed by your purpose, he missed certain stitches so that you may lose, be loosed and have stretch marks for that, that thing because he knew if you didn't have stretch marks when we will all be in trouble. God of the details. My God. Let's continue. And then it says, "My, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You, Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Uh, David says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, for, for you to say that, you must be in a certain place. Because when we look at our lives, uh, there's nothing that is wonderful on a normal day. Uh, so for, for you to actually utter this statement, you must be in a certain place spiritually. This is not a physical location that can actually utter this statement and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> it's a spiritual statement. It's a spiritual place. It's a spiritual location. A person standing on the ground and looking at situations cannot utter that statement. So David was standing on a spiritual place when he recognized that I am actually fearfully and wonderfully made by God. With all my flaws, with, with my big boobs, my big breasts, my, my big ears, my big lips, my big teeth, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. That is a spiritual recognition. You cannot say that in the physical. Only in the spirit can you utter those words. That you are fearfully and it means you are wonderful. You actually acknowledge that I am wonderful. I am actually wonderful. <laughs> oh, it scares me just saying that I am actually wonderful <laughs> oh, those words that just scare me because really I'm wonderful really <laughs> that's what the flesh is saying really are you wonderful really but the word says I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God and then it says uh, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. I was made in the secret place. Therefore, there's things that are needed in you. There's the details that are needed in you in the secret place that we need to dig every day of our lives. We are digging, my God, every day of our lives. We are trying to dig these little details that are hidden in our frames by God that were put in secret that nobody on earth knows that, that we also don't know. 
That's why we bump into our ourselves. And we, we grow up in 30, 35, 40, and then at 50, you bump into your real self because you are discovering the details that you are so clear right now that you can actually discover the detail that God has put in you. You move, you moved away from all the cloud, the, the, the things of youth, the things of, of, of foolishness. Now you are so grounded that you can actually discover that there's so much detail about me. There's so much precious things about me. There's so much that is actually wonderful about me. I hated myself so much in my youth. The things that I actually hated about me when I was younger, they are very precious. They are things that are so beautiful. I didn't know then. So there's, there's details that we still have to discover about ourselves that they were knitted in secret. Nobody can tell us. Only when we have our relationship with God clear, then we can see and discover this thing. Therefore, you have not seen yourself yet. You have not met yourself yet. You still gonna encounter yourself. You still gonna meet yourself. You still gonna know that you are a prophet. That you can actually prophesy and like, wow, me, I can prophesy. Yes, I, you still gonna encounter that person. He's waiting for you in the future. So the sooner you clear the camp and make the camp to be cleaner, then God can encounter you and reveal this person that was knitted in secret in the darkest places. God knits you. There is something that he put in there. He knitted you in secret in the darkness so that but the devil cannot see what he puts in you because if the devil can see what God puts in you, he will make sure that he snatches it away. But he also doesn't know some of the things that we knitted in you. So as you go about, you discover those things. You bump into that person that is you. God of the details. He is detailed about our lives. My God. Can you imagine people that do all these things that we used to do? These cell phones, these ring lights, these iPhones. Where did they get those things? They were knitted in them, in their fiber. They were knitted they, and they, they encountered them at some point in their lives and they come with this discovery. There's things that are knitted in you already that you have to bring forth and bring forth to the world, to the church, to the community. They are in you. You are a wonder, fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Therefore, don't let the thing of the earth cloud you. God cares about you. He says you are far worth far more than many sparrows. Worth far more than many sparrows. The Father cares about the sparrows, but He says you are worth far more than the sparrows. Let Let's finish this. We are almost out of time. He says, "My your eyes saw my unformed body." All the days ordained for me were written in your book. He says, your eyes saw my unformed body. Can you believe that? That you had a, a sight of God at some point. Your eyes made contact with God at some point. Your eyes saw my unformed body. You made eye contact with God at some point in your life. My God. That's deep. That's deep. Let, let, let's pass it on the top. <clears throat> All the days ordained for me were written in your book. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of all of them. How vast is the sum of all your thoughts. The, all the thoughts that God has about you. How vast is their sum. My God. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. The thoughts that God has about you. David says, they I would outnumber the grains of sand. God has many good thoughts about you when i awake i am still with you if only you god would slay the wicked away from me you who are bloodthirsty they speak of me with evil intent your adversaries misuse your name do i not hate those who hate you lord and abhor those those who are in rebellion against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Verse 23, important. Search me, God, and know my heart. That's, that's our prayer as we start this year. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me 
and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See if there's any offensive way in me. That offensive way in you is the thing that will hinder God from using you. That offensive way in you. David said, search me and find that offensive way in me. Because that detail, that offensive way is that which will hinder God from using you. My prayer in this year is that God may use all of us. We, the kingdom, my God, the kingdom needs all of us. You know, even if you lift up my hands for as I go to battle, as I go to war, that's, that's you being used by God. That is your place on earth. Your place is not like my place. You supporting me. It's your place. You supporting somebody next to you is your place at that time until God gives you another place. May we find our place in the kingdom of God in this year and we, may we excel in that thing that we think it's least important that you are doing. May you excel in that so that that thing may become a stepping stone for you to go to the next level of your life. You cannot go to the next level until you have mastered at this level what are you taking to the next level if you have not passed this level to go to the next level is for you to master this level first when you have mastered here then god can take you to the next level because there's things that you can bring there there's things that you can teach there there's ideas that you can bring there without anything you stay at this level therefore may we master this level may we excel at this level so that god may be able to to trust us with the next level. Therefore, ask God to search your thoughts, the thoughts of jealousy of others. They are taking you nowhere. That's defilement in the camp. Jealousy takes you nowhere. Therefore, search your heart and not be jealous. Try and force yourself and tell your flesh that you are going to do exactly what I want you to do. If you are jealous about somebody, go and support that very person that you are jealous about because it's not you who is jealous it is the spirit behind you therefore you need to be constantly fighting that spirit if that spirit tells you you are jealous because the person is beautiful go and tell that person how beautiful they are you are winning that battle against that jealousy one step at a time therefore in this year we need to care about the little details that are bothering our lives those little wolves that are busy to we towing the things around us, the things that we think don't matter, they matter to God. So every day of our lives in this year should be fighting those little things and making sure that our camp is not defined, that God may use us so that we may move from this level to the next level of our lives and go and occupy the kingdom, as I said, needs all of us. It's not a kingdom of celebrities. It's not a kingdom of starings. It's a kingdom of all of us pulling to together towards the mark of the high calling. There's a mark that you are aiming for. Therefore, we need to do it together. One man cannot do this. We need all of us. We can't have one prophet like Elijah thought. God is saying, I have other prophets that are hidden. We need a whole company of prophets moving together. Not one, not two, but an entire company pulling together. Therefore, this year, it's important for us to search our had to search the little details because we have a God that cares about the little details. He searches the little details. He checks the little details. The little details in your life that you think don't matter, that you think don't bother God, they bother God. He's bothered by your poverty. He's bothered by your lack. He's bothered by your lack of wisdom. He's bothered by your sickness. He's bothered by your rebellious child. He's bothered by your ruined marriage. God is bothered about everything in our lives. There's nothing, nothing. You cannot run away from his presence. You are forever in his sight. Therefore, never allow the enemy in this year to make you think that God has forgotten you. He sees you all the time, every day, all the time. God sees you. You are never hidden from God's sight. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. 
We give you adoration. We praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for the little details that you care about in our lives. Lord, we have so much little details that we think that you you don't mind, that you, you don't care about me. You've forgotten me, Lord, oh God. Those things, oh Father, that the enemy, the lies that the enemy keeps on feeding us. Now you have told us that you are God of the details. You care about the little sparrows. Therefore, you care for us more than the little sparrows, Lord, Oh God, may we remember that when we are in despair, when you are in pain, Lord, oh God, when we feel, oh God, like neglected, may we remember that, that we have a father that cares about us in the name of Jesus. Lord, may we clean up the achans in our camp. May we clean up every day. May we strive to clean out the achans in our camp that we don't defile our camp, that the enemy may have, oh God, a foothold and a handhold into our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, in the daily struggles of our life as we navigate this year, Lord, oh Jesus. May we stand with you. May we have the upper hand all the time, oh God, knowing that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God, oh God. May we always have the upper hand. May we remember that we are the head and not the tail. We are always above and never beneath. May we not be swallowed up by things and go beneath things. May we know that we are always above and never beneath. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. I bless you, Lord. I bless everybody that listened to my voice. May you bless them. Oh, God, may they search their hearts. May they search their thoughts for the little details that hinder you from blessing them, that hinder you from using them, that hinder you, oh, God, from them reaching the next level of their life. Lord, oh, God, help us in our searching. Reveal these things to us. Make them clear. Even things that some we are so used to them. We don't even see anything wrong with them. May you reveal those hidden things to us, oh God, that offend you in our lives. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that came in late. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I I see Pastor Masiza, I saw Pastor Busi, I saw Mpume, I saw many people uh, that came in late. Bless you, saints. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bless you. Love you.